any experiences in your formative years, your childhood, that made you the conductor you are now? I've been thinking about conducting from the age of 12 or 13 and was observing other conductors and thinking, oh God, I'd love to do that, and thinking, I'm not sure that's the way to do it, and could I do it better, or could I ever get it as good as that? I mean, I played violin and then viola in Chelsea Opera Group under Colin Davis, and that was a wonderful experience. He introduced me to Berlioz. His sense of the organic kind of um, interconnection of, of voices and, and theatrical uh, the theatrical workings of the, the music with the orchestration of Berlioz, which is so original. Uh, that was a huge lesson to me. I guess I was very fortunate in that I grew up in a, in a, in a family of amateur musicians, but um, we sang a lot. We sang at grace times, before so meals. Before every night. Yeah. And um, my parents, all through the war, they sang with a few friends, they sang the bird four-part and five-part masses um, every Sunday to keep their spirits up. Mm -hmm. And then music was tied in my family to the, the ritual of the seasons and the agricultural year, because my father was a, a, a farmer and a, a planter of trees. I'm immensely indebted to my parents for giving me that childhood. I mean, the standout composers for me when I was little were, were Talis and Bird and Gibbons and Wilkes, and, but also Heinrich Schutz, Claudio Monteverdi, Purcell. And, and I learned music kind of chronologically, which was so wonderful because when you got to Bach and then Mozart, that felt, you know, glorious. That felt sort of very modern, as it were. If you have that sense of progression, then each individual composer and each era is um, a world in itself and it has its own sound world. But it's wonderful to have that as a starting point, is to really impregnate yourself with the sound world and the circumstances of, of um, music making of the period. You have the broadest of repertoire we've already talked about. You've a couple of weeks ago been conducting Stravinsky. Is there any difference to the physicality or yeah. is it? And, and there is a difference um, in conducting a choir and an orchestra, but though I try to minimise it because part of my um, aim is always to try and get an orchestra to imitate voices, to to speak their lines. So they, they use their embouchure of their wind players and they use their bow speeds and, and bow position vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the fingerboard and, and the bridge to give a sense of rhetoric, a, a sense of the uh, underlying narration of the music. So I try to make them as choral as possible and I try to make my choir as, as orchestral as possible in terms of uh, their agility, their virtuosity, their articulation as well. And it's, 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 it's wonderful if you can bring the two together. And um, I mean, when we do Beethoven 5, uh, for example, um, in the middle of the last movement, they all sing La Liberté, La Liberté. And if they're not playing trombones, but the strings, they play and sing at the same time. I mean, it, it's, the, it's a thing of mine that the French influence on Beethoven is enormous. I think it's more to do with the affect rather than the style of the music that affects one's gestures and, and, and affects... I mean, with Stravinsky, you need to have a Boulezian, um clarity and, and, and precision of beat, which is totally inappropriate in, if you're doing Brahms. It needs to be flowing and you need to have a, a, a strong sense of rhythmical um, counterpoint because Brahms is all about twos against threes and, and about waltz rhythms and, and um, not just his, his, his Hungarian dances. But if you think of Wie lieblich sind eine Wohnungen from the... German Requiem, and that's a slow uh, uh, Wiener Walzer. It needs to have a, a, li a lilt to it. So, so the gesture changes. The gesture changes, yeah. This week we have the pleasure of you working with our Orchestre Philharmonique du Luxembourg. Do you try to take them on the period instrument journey? How far can you take an orchestra like ours on that? It mustn't be done in a negative way. It mustn't be saying, thou shalt not vibrate. I mean, that, that is self-defeating. Because then they think, what's going to happen? It'll be a horrible sound. So I try to put it positively and, and say, use your bows in, in, in a really lyrical and expressive way and vary the bow speed all the time, depending on the phrase lengths. And, and observe um, how slurs can, from Mozart or earlier than Mozart onwards, um, convey a, a, a soft beginning and a soft ending and then an effluvium in the middle, a, a growth and, and a, an expressiveness.
um, which doesn't necessarily need the left hand. The left hand can, can vibrate from time to time, but it should be when you run out of other ideas, basically. <laughs> it shouldn't be a negative thing at all. It should be a, a sense that it's, it's an expressive device that could be used, but the transparency of the overall texture is immeasurably improved uh, with less upper partials and less vibration. Mm -hmm. And then it's reserved for very special moments. And so do you have a very clear vision, is the wrong word, of the sound that you want to hear? Or do you take the sound of the orchestra and manipulate it's it? It's a bit of both. I mean, it's, it's you know, guess-conducting is a funny old thing. Mm. It's like dogs meeting and sniffing. An orchestra can be very put off by a conductor in the first five seconds and vice versa. Or it can, it can grow, it can, it can establish. And it's your job as a conductor to, to listen and to adapt to, to, to what the sound you're given and to go with it, to run with it. Um, it's no point in being dictatorial and saying this is how it's going to be. That just cramps everybody up. So there's a, there's a kind of lovemaking which goes on, which is, which is winning and very, very powerful if it, if it comes off. The, but the chemistry is not always there. But I, I, feel, I feel very good about it today. Great. Are there any similarities between leading an orchestra or a choir and your other passion, which is running a, a bio farm? Ah. Or are they complementary? They're complementary. <laughs> I mean, they're not uh, things that I've ever had to negotiate uh, um, about my commitment to either because they're deeply rooted passions of mine. I grew up on a farm. I learnt about silviculture, about tree planting from my father, who was a, a passionate planter and, and grower of, of, of trees. I never wanted to lose that, that root or, or that um, connection, even though my elder brother um, uh, inherited the farm and then sold it. And, and I've been, over the last 50 years, trying to buy it back bit by bit. I haven't got it all. But, um, because you're a steward, you're not an owner. You're a steward, you're, you're a, a carer of the land and what it grows. As you are a care of your... Exactly, of, of my orchestras, my two orchestras, the English Baroque Solos and the Orchestre Révolution Romantique and the, my Monte Verde Choir. And, they, and, and the music you perform. And the music, yes, absolutely. So it, it needs nurture. It sounds a bit hooey, but it, both need nurture. The contact with the soil, with the, with the grass, with the growing crops, with the animals, uh, is fundamentally important in a world that is losing its roots and where the pressures, economic and environmental, are enormous. And the, therefore, the need to protect the environment and to, to pass it on in a better shape than you inherited is, is, is paramount. And I feel the same about music, mm. that I had the privilege of, of learning early music early on in my life, and it's expanded and expanded in, in terms of repertoire. But post-COVID, and in this completely mad world we're in at the moment, I feel an extra responsibility, an extra sense of commitment and, 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 and re-devoting myself to, to, to making contact with not just my musicians, but with, with the public, with, with, with listeners, because the hunger, the need is, is greater than ever. Do you have a favourite piece to conduct? This sounds very trite, but any piece that I'm doing at a given moment becomes, in a way, the favourite piece. It's so important to invest all your, your affection and your your knowledge such as it is to get under the skin of the music and it's only when you do that that you have a fighting chance of bringing it forward into people's into people's consciousness